Hi there, it's Paul in Perth here again, and it's a rainy day in Perth. You might remember before we had some really sunny days. This one's a rainy day. I've also got some council work going on in the background, so there's going to be a bit of uh, road noise. We're just going to have to deal with it. The purpose of today's video is I want to do a, um, a structural, just, just a reference um, video of the, um, the LFBE engine out of the engine bay. Uh, just so, for example, if you if you want to see what the um, belt pattern is of the serpentine belt, then then you can see it. Um, or if you want to know, you know, uh, what the where the intake manifold sits in relationship to the starter motor or something like that. So the only purpose of this video is to get a structural reference point for me or for you in the future, just in case you're wondering how things go. So let's start with the front of the engine. So here's our serpentine belt here. So that's the correct path. So if you take one off, that's the path you need to put it back on. You'll notice on the um, crank pulley, there is actually a second belt. The air conditioner, uh, air conditioning compressor uh, bolts onto the side and there's actually a second belt that goes off for the um, air con compressor. I have, haven't got that there. Uh, what else have we got? So you've got a timing cover. Um, this is your tensioner pulley. So when you want to um, release the belt, you put a, um, a socket onto there and you bend it over and that's how you get, get that belt off. Uh, that's an idler pulley. You've got the alternator, you've got the crank pulley and that's about it. This is the engine mount. This engine mount is actually, uh, was badly damaged in the accident that the car had. So um, uh, yours, yours will probably, hopefully will look different to that. So that's the front of the engine. Let's go around to the uh, right hand side of the engine, which, which is the front of the engine as it's in the engine bay. So we've got our intake manifold here. Uh, our starter motor is here. Uh, oil filter. This is a, a manual gearbox. So there's your clutch slave cylinder there. Um, your thermos, this is the thermostat housing. So if you need to replace the thermostat, the thermostat is in there. There's three bolts, three eight mil bolts to take off the thermostat housing. Uh, I believe there's a knock sensor in behind that which you can't see. Now, just to, just to show you, th this vehicle is in a front end accident and this little piece here has been cracked off on this particular engine. Yours will look a little bit different here because yours won't be cracked. Uh, here's our throttle body. So um, that's the throttle body there. There's another um, hose. Now heading to the rear of the engine, we've got our ECU here. We've got all of our wiring loom. There's the uh, positive um, battery terminal. That's the connector that goes into the fuse box. Here's our transmission mount. So um, this triangular uh, arrangement here is the is the uh, basis of the transmission mount and the top mount that goes into the actual frame of the of the car bolts through that hole there. The, these are your gear stick selectors. So you know that when you're selecting a gear, you're you're going um, in the x axis and the y axis. You know you go across and up, for example. These are your gear selectors. So there's your one one of your x y um, axes and there's the other so the um, the cable selectors actually go onto these these balls here when we go up to the car I'll show you that's the end of the uh, clutch line so if you remember on the other side of the engine we had the slate the clutch slave cylinder here if you follow that line through that's the other end of the um, of the clutch line Actually, I might as well just push that back into there because that's where that lives, and uh, and that goes obviously off to the to the clutch. Now, what I've done, if we go now to the um, the left hand side of the engine, you've got the exhaust manifold here. Uh, if it's important to you, these are 15 mil um, nuts. I only took them off yesterday, so it's very clear in my mind that they're a 15 mil, and you need a 15 mil deep um, because a 15 mil standard won't go far enough in to get it over these um, studs here. 
I've left the drive shafts in uh, because I didn't want to drain the transmission fluid and the person that's bought this um, this here is going to put the whole thing in. It's a really interesting project actually. The guy that's bought this has got a DE Mazda 2 and he wants to stick a 2 litre um, BL Mazda 3 engine into his um, DE Mazda 2. I might end up doing a couple of videos on it because it is, it's a pretty pretty interesting thing this guy's doing. He does work for Mazda so um, uh, he's pretty keen on the challenge. So that's the back of the engine which obviously is the bit that when you're working on a car is the hardest to see. So there's what it looks like. These are the heater hose um, connectors. So they go onto the, um, the connectors on the firewall. Uh, the, uh, what is it in the, the left hand drive shaft is a, a just a, a, a standard CV joint. So that articulates at both ends. On the right hand side, it's a different arrangement. You have a straight um, shaft, you have this carrier bearing here, and then the flexible part of it actually comes off of there. So the left and the right drive shafts in the BL Master 3 are, are different. One of them is flexible from the um, differential, the other is not flexible in the first part and then flexible in the second part. So that is the, my reference for the LFVE 2.0 litre um, engine. Let's go up and just have a look at the engine bay, just so that you can see the firewall, because it's, you don't always get to see the firewall because there's normally an engine in the way. So let's go and have a look. Alright, so if you've been watching my videos recently, you're going to recognise this wreck because I've, I've done about six videos on this particular car and you'll notice that the chassis rails um, are very, very bent off to the side. So what happened is another car has come through here and bent the whole thing uh, that way. But it does give us a really good chance to um, to look at the firewall. So, so let's do that. So we'll, we'll just do a panorama of it. So we've got our, our fuse box here. I've raided a few um, a few relays and things out of it, but you might remember there was a blue switch when I showed you the engine. That's the blue switch that, that that's where that clips into. And the, uh, the positive terminal from the main battery clamp uh, goes onto that post there. But there are a bunch of relays missing out of there, so that's probably not a good reference. Um, the ABS pump and the ABS module normally sit here. I sold that part, so that's missing, so you won't see it. Uh, looking around here, you've got all your brake lines. That's where the heater hose connectors um, connect onto. I'll do a separate video on how to remove these uh, because there is a little trick to it, but I'll leave that for another video. So that's where the heater hoses connect to. There's your air conditioning lines. So those go off to the aircon um, compressor. That's where the aircon lines go through the firewall into your aircon unit inside the cabin. These are the manual gear selector rods. So as I said, when you're selecting left, right, up and down on, on the gear stick, you're actually moving these in and out, which as you recall on the gearbox was moving uh, that, that tree, that Christmas tree uh, left or right, up and down. And that's actually how you manually put the the gearbox into a particular gear. Here's our exhaust manifold. So you will remember a video I did on um, oxygen sensors. So the pre-cat oxygen sensor was there. That's the catalytic converter itself there. And that's where the post-cat um, oxygen sensor would have been. I've removed them because I sell them. So that's where they're gone. Over here, we've got our brake, um, our brake fluid reservoir, which is obviously empty because I've, I've sold the ABS pump, so I had to drain it. This hole here is where the um, vacuum line for the, um, the vacuum brakes goes in. So the engine generates a vacuum and it feeds that, or it sucks that vacuum actually, through a, through a little pipe that connects into there. What else have we got? Oh, the all important uh, steering rack. Okay, so down here we've got We've got the steering rack, so that's there. So to get the steering rack out, you've got a bolt here, 
those look like they're for the um, for the sway bar, so they probably don't have to come out. You'd certainly have to take that out to get the steering rack out. There's another one over here. I feel like there should be more. There might be another one under that. Um, two bolts doesn't really sound like enough. Certainly though, this steering is hydraulically assisted. So were I to take these hydraulic lines off the um, power steering, I would be um, dripping power steering fluid all over my, my lovely wet ground. Um, the power steering pump itself lives, lives over here on the outside of the chassis rail. So that's the power steering pump reservoir there. That's the power steering pump itself. This particular one got damaged in the accident, so I've not been able to sell it, but that's where it lives. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to do a video uh, as much for my own reference as yours. Like I said, it's just sometimes easy when you're going, I don't know where this nut is, I can't, um, I can't visualize it. I thought this might just be a nice video to do so that you or I in the future can grab a still off it or just conceptualise in our head in three dimensions where various things are. So thank you from Paul in Perth. If you've enjoyed this, please click like, click subscribe and leave me a comment. Tell me what country you're from and, um, and spread the love and sp spread the knowledge. So thanks from Paul in Perth. See you later.